Hi folks, Robin here. I'm just waiting on Kevin for a wild camp and uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous night. I just hope he hurries up because uh, daylight is limited. In this episode I've also got a rucksack and a fleece to show you that Cotswold kindly sent me in return for a honest review. It's this fleece here. It is the Rab Geon pullover fleece and the rucksack is a low alpine airzone pro 35 45 and i'll explain later why it's got two numbers in it right folks this is the low alpine airzone pro 3545 um, this is the second week i've used it in a row so it's probably more of an initial review because i've not had a, a chance to test it properly but i've got a good idea over the last two trips what to expect from this but anyway, what I'll do is I'll give you a quick run through. I'll start from the top and work our way down on the pack. So at the top of the pack, we have a floating lid. This zips open, obviously, and you've got plenty of space in here for bits and bobs. Um, last night, I put my food in there. Underneath the lid, you've got another pocket here. And you can see there, I've got my car keys clipped in. And there's room for a wallet, perhaps, and other bits and bobs. Got a little emergency protocol just in case, um, and that's pretty much the lid. The lid does adjust here. There are straps, so if the pack's rather full, you can obviously increase that to fit over the rucksack. But, so I mentioned yesterday this is the thirty-five forty-five, and the reason for that is, well, I'll show you. I've got a set thirty-five at the moment, but if you need more space. This opens out and it gives you an extra 10 litres, which I used last night to carry the drone and an insulated layer and that just bought me that bit extra space. And then there's a second toggle here, so there's two toggles, that's for the 35, that one's for the 45. And then this just folds over, clips in and then you put your lid across and obviously that's just a little bit tighter now but they obviously adjust and you can see there I can loosen or tighten the lid so I'll just loosen that off a little bit okay so at the front you can see this it's a sort of spider configuration they call it and you can put a lot of things in here this plastic bit here would hold in a helmet that you can put in waterproofs. I managed to carry some water in it last week and this week I've just popped in my sit mat just like that. So that's really handy for bits and bobs. Um, I think if you had wet waterproofs and then the sun came out you could leave them on there as you walk. To the side of the pack each side has a wand pocket. This is good for carrying water as you can see here. I've got two bottles in there and they're quite, they're quite deep as well and they've got a strap here just to tighten across there that is obviously echoed on the other side as well you can see here I've got my tent poles in there with another bottle of water so they, those one pockets are decent when I first got this pack the first thing I noticed was like well where can I put my ice axe and where can I put my trekking poles and this is really clever there's two little loops here you just pull out and your your spike of your trekking pole goes in there and what you've got here is another loop which if you undo this you put the trekking pole in there and the point in there and then you just clip that in and that would keep them in place so I'm hearing you say what about the ice axe well this is really clever as well hidden away is this little toggle And that goes through one of the holes on the head of your ice axe. That I thought was really clever. And again, the top of the ice axe would be up here. So uh, yeah, that's really clever, I like that. To the rear of the pack, you have got the air zone system. And this is obviously to keep your back a bit more ventilated. And it does work to a degree. Um, you can see here it's got this, what they call the four stitch. And it's really tough and durable. It's also got this sort of contoured bit for the small of your back. That took me a little bit to get used to that actually, but uh, it is comfortable. And 
the one thing I did notice about this rock stack is it really manages the weight really well. I've got about 10 to 11 kilograms including water and food and it, it just kept it all nice together. Whereas my Osprey Levity 45, everything just sort of bounces a little bit, but this just kept it all nice and tight. You can also see here, it's got a sternum strap with a built-in whistle, and you've got your hip belt with adequate pad in there as well. And you've got two hip pockets, which is quite useful. I can fit my mobile phone in that, or you can put snacks, compass, whatever you fancy. Now, the one downside to this rucksack is it weighs 1.56 kilograms, so for the gram counters, this just might be a little bit on the heavy side, but I can live with that because it's comfortable and it carries the weight really well. So that's the main thing for me. For long distance backpacking, I would want something lighter, but for one or two nights away, this is ideal because you've got the 35 or the 45. But because it's so heavy, it's also very durable. It's got a 200 denier ripstop nylon and for that, this is a good winter pack because it's just so durable. It's the first thing I noticed was the, the durability of it. And I think this will last the test of time. Inside the rucksack, you have a storage system for your hydration bladder. I don't particularly use them, so I always have bottles at the side here. You can also adjust the, um, the, the back of the rucksack as well, just to suit your height. And to do that, there is, I'll just empty this to adjust the pack to suit your size inside here you rip that open, there's some velcro and you just move your hand and you can just feel that move up and down and that should sort of adjust to suit your back there's plenty of space in here particularly when you open it up to the 45 as well is there anything else I've missed? oh yeah to the side here there is a pocket to get into the rucksack, so that is handy for things at the bottom. You can see I've got my tent there, and I've got my sleeping stuff below. Getting it shut can sometimes be a bit tricky, particularly if you've got full with a gunnel like me. There we go, I don't want to catch the tent. On the other side of the pack, there is a, an identical pocket, but instead of getting you into the rucksack, this is just storage and I can get my hand right down behind the bottles there so that's quite deep I don't know what you could put in there a sit mat, map and compass, some food whatever you like but yeah there you go that is the low Alpine Airzone Pro 45, 35, 45 if you've got any questions do ask in the comment section below uh, I will put a link to this in the description as well if you want to have a look at this all right, Kev, how's it going? All right, Rab. So Cotswold Outdoors also kindly sent me this Rab Gion pullover fleece. And uh, it is made of their thermic stretch material. I have to say it's, it's nice and fitted for me. Albeit I do find the Rab sleeves tend to be just a little bit a tad long on me. Obviously, if you've got slightly longer arms, it'd be better, but... I've always noticed that the wrap stuff just a bit too long for me. But uh, it's not a showstopper. I've been wearing this fleece constantly for the last couple of weeks and I find it a really nice mid layer. I run quite hot, so I can walk with just a base layer and this on, especially when I'm heading uphill. If you're a bit of a cold tail, you can use this fleece as part of your layering system. So you'd have a, obviously your base layer, use this fleece as your mid layer, then you'd either have a hard shell or another mid layer on top of the fleece as well. It depends on your own personal setup, how hot or cold that you run, but uh, this would certainly make a good um, mid layer for your winter setup. I think it'd be too warm for summer. But yeah, so I'll put a link to the rucksack and the fleece down below if you want to check these out. So the aim of the game is to camp just somewhere up here. 
Do you ever get that feeling you've picked the wrong hill? This one here is basking in the last of the sun, yet we're in the shade. Oh well, them's the brakes. Oh well, we've just literally just missed the sunset by minutes. But this is the top. Right, I think we've settled on somewhere. Summit Cairns is just behind us. Identify this. And this gives us the view, which is rather nice. for the helm compact one again she's looking good solid wee thing that Kev what have you got today? I have the Lanshan 1.5 well it's pretty much the 3F UL pyramid helm but it's lovely and spacious inside alright it's time to get some hot water on the go and get some dinner I am starving It's going to be a noisy wild camp tonight. The geese down there are loud as anything. Don't know if you can hear them. There's hundreds of them. Hunters. Can he beat the candle like for this time of year? It's just nice to have that natural glow instead of harsh LED. And when I say harsh LED, I mean like this. Here's the button. Boom. Boom shakalaka. Need a wee bit of meditation music tonight, Robin, and just stare into the candle and think of Zen. Kev thinks there's a wee inversion happening over there, but it's a bit too dark to see. But we shall see it in the morning, I suppose. Bolt head. I've turned off the head torches because somebody's coming up. And I don't know why. That's a walker coming up. I can see it in the line, so you should be able to see it now, right? What's this boy wanting? Do you know Morse code, Kevin? Oh, I didn't... I want to see if he comes over. Oh, oh, is Shelly right towards us? Oh, you took a video. I've got, I've, I've got snapped. <laughs> uh oh I've given a location away I don't know why but me and Kevin were pure panic in there but they've turned around there must be one of those like an algo cat or something because we can see the tail lights just disappearing away now but uh, I don't know maybe they thought we were illegal stalking or something like that but uh, they're away now I'm not going to sleep tonight alright folks it's just gone 10 o'clock rock and roll in our beds Bring us back in the morning. Cheers. Good night. Night, Kev. Night, Robin. Night, John boy. Night, Jenny. Good morning, campers. Good morning, campers. It's looking to be a rather nice morning. Any inversions, do we? Nah, any inversions. And sun's... And sun rises in another 40 minutes. Let's shape it up to the east of us. Ovs. There is the sun beginning to rise just beyond Kev's tent. This is just packing up. Kev's dropped his tent. I'm about to do mine. And we're going to head down to 
to the reservoir down there. Right, that's us, ready to roll. Rock and roll. By the way. What's the key message, Kev? Leave no mother <laughs> place. <laughs> it's actually a lot lighter than it was. So we're just heading down to the east end of the reservoir. Gonna have a little look around there and we'll bring you back then. has um, parted company with me. He's going to head up a hill called Sparleton, just behind where we're parked. So he's away to do that just now, if you're wondering. And depending on the time, I might bump into him back at the car. Hi folks, Kev here at the top of Sparleton Hill. I left Robin at the reservoir to play with his toy, the little drone. Just took a wee walk up here. He's done this hill before, eh, so good visibility today, I can see the Fife Lomans over the Arthur seat and in the Pentland Hills. And there's where we were camped last night, up there. Right, that's me on the road. Always walk in the opposite direction of the traffic. When you get to a bend like this, it's actually safer to then cross the road. There's a good example, Mr. Asdaman. Right, folks, I've probably got about enough kilometre back to the car, so I'm going to leave you with some other videos here that you might like to watch. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll catch you next one. Cheers! <laughs>